Sigurd, Duke the Builder here, and in this episode of Sig and Death, we're gonna talk about uh, the last piece of the Comtime puzzle, uh, namely being uh, what's known as any type in Sig. Uh, it's a concept that that you can find in, in in other programming languages, but the difference in Sig is that um, the the handling of what's called uh, duct typing is done at compile time. Uh, the duct typing term comes from uh, dynamic languages with the expression if it walks like a duck or quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And it refers to uh, what, what you can see in many dynamic languages that you can uh, have uh, interfaces and functions that work with any type and basically they just uh, depend on the behavior of a certain type, um, mainly the, the methods that, that it exposes. Uh, and, and just with that, they can, they can basically uh, handle any, any kind of data type. Uh, in Zig, which is a statically typed language, um, you have the concept of duct typing, but the difference is that it's all done at compile time and that uh, provides a lot of flexibility. We've already seen a type of, of duct typing when we, we, uh, we've seen functions with comp time parameters with type type and then we use that type to find out more about uh, the, the, the type that's being uh, worked on. Well, any type take, takes that to the next level, and we're going to see an example here. Uh, we have here a first struct named A that has here a method, and it's a method because its uh, first parameter is of type A. Okay, and The method is to string. It returns a string, and we are returning the literal A. Okay, Here we have another struct, B. It also has a to string function, but this is not a method because uh, the first uh, parameter isn't of type B. It's a type slice of const u8. So basically, this function, what it does is it takes a string and it and it just returns it. Okay. Here we have a third struct uh, called C, and this one, uh, the to string of this one, is not even a function. Um, it's it's a constant declaration inside this struct okay and it's a string also a slice of const u8 and uh, it's equal to the literal c okay and here we have an enum has only two fields a and d and here we do have once again a method because uh, we have this first parameter of type d which is the type of the uh, containing uh, enum and what we're going to do is we're going to return the string uh, version of the field, uh, basically taking advantage of this handy built-in called tag name, okay, which returns a string of a uh, enum field that you pass in. So uh, what are we going to do here? We have the function print, okay, and print has only one uh, parameter x of type any type. And uh, like uh, the any uh, concept in other languages and what happens in, in, in dynamic languages and languages with interfaces, uh, we don't know much about this type. Any type basically, uh, as, as the term says, it will accept practically anything that you pass in. So if we're going to have expectations about the behavior of what, whatever is passed in, uh, we have to do some compile time type reflection, okay? So, the first thing we do here is we define t here as a constant, and that's going to be the type of x, okay? So, first step, we obtain the type of x. Then, we're going to use the handy has decal that we saw previously to see if that type has a declaration called to string. If it doesn't, we return, okay? Now, we're going to check if that declaration is a function. So, first of all, we need to uh, obtain the, the type of that declaration, okay? Because we know that we have a two-string declaration, but we don't know what type it is. So, we obtain the type 
using this other built-in, which is one of the built uh, one of the many built-ins that are uh, available for this type of uh, compile time type reflection, field will construct or basically it'll give us access to a field of a struct or or data type. And uh, even though it's named field, it does give us access to the declarations. So within this type T, we want whatever is named to string. And we're going to then uh, take the type of, of that. OK? So decal type will give us the type of that to string declaration within T. OK? Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to check using the other built-in type info of that type if it's sent a dot fn okay and this basically means is it a function if it's not a function we return okay so up till here we know that we have uh, a declaration in this type called to string we know that it's a function but now we want to know if it's actually a method okay and for that what we're going to do is we use from the stud meta uh, namespace and I, I'll put a link in the description the stud meta namespace has lots and lots of functions that are really helpful when you're doing compile time uh, reflection and duct typing and one of them is this one called args tuple and what this will do it'll generate a tuple and, and, and we'll see more about tuples later on in the course but basically a tuple is like a like a struct uh, whose fields don't have any names and we can access them like a, like an array basically um, it'll construct one of those with uh, here passing in that type of the two string declaration so what we, we're basically saying is that uh, we want the argument types of this function type we already know that decal type is a, is a function so args tuple will give us what are the types of that function of the parameters of that function okay and then we're going to use an inline for to loop over those args okay um, we're using here another uh, function from stud meta it's fields uh, because the, the the args tuple being a tuple it has fields and we want to iterate over each one of those and uh, we also need the index because we're interested in the very first one so uh, here within the the body we check if this is index zero this means this is the first argument or, or parameter to that function and if the type of that arg is equal to t then indeed it is a method because that's basically the definition of a method. Uh, it's a function within a type uh, whose first parameter type is the type itself. So now in here, inside uh, this uh, success branch of the if, we know it's, it's a method. We have a method called toString, and we can safely call it here, toString. Uh, we could even uh, go further and test that the return type of that method is a string but I wanted to keep the, 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 the example not too complex. So up to here, we, we just basically know that we have the declaration, it's a function, and specifically, it's a method. So we can call it like a method, OK? And uh, finally, here in main, what we're going to do is we're going to define different constants of those different types, OK? And then we're going to call that print function with all of them. So this is uh, basically looking. Uh, like code from a dynamic language where we have different types and we're passing them all to a, to a single function but uh, what zig is going to do is uh, similar to what happens uh, with generics in other languages uh, this is indeed a generic function and every time we call it with a different type zig will generate a different version of this function specific to that type okay and it'll transform all of this code, eliminating all of the compile time evaluated stuff and leaving only what's necessary at runtime. OK, so if we go here and execute, we see that indeed we only get output from the struct A and uh, that uh, enum 
uh, with the with the field uh, D, okay, which were indeed the only ones that had a method called to string, okay. Uh, in the case of B and C, we don't get any output. We only get output from the enum and from uh, the struct A. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, we get a glimpse. Uh, there are many, many other things that we can do uh, with uh, compile time, reflection of types, and uh, duct typing in Zig. Uh, it's a really, really uh, amazing feature. Sometimes it seems like magic, but it's all Zig all the way down, okay? So I hope this is useful. Um, did the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.